New documents have been attained apparently demonstrating that members of the Kremlin, including Vladimir Putin, had had a meeting back early on in 2016 and had decided to assist Donald Trump in becoming president. Now, I know you may be watching this and thinking, wait, we're getting these documents now? Didn't we? Haven't we been through this a whole bunch of times? Or you might be responding with, um, who is this going to convince at this point? And my answer is, nobody. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. nobody. In a, in a very real sense, it's sort of irrelevant. He became president, he was president, and he's not out anymore. There's yeah. the small chance he might become president again. So maybe for that reason. And, and look, I have always said, knowing what is true and accurate is its own value. That said, when I saw this story break, I thought, oh, I just hate it. Because nobody who's been arguing against this, assuming that the documents end up being authentic, and I am not assuming that, they appear to be, but we don't know. Nobody's gonna change their mind anyway. That said, objectively speaking, it's significant news, so we're gonna launch into it. And here's what we know. The meeting apparently took place on the 22nd of January back in 2016, with the Russian president, his five chiefs and senior ministers all, pre all present. They agreed a Trump White House would help secure Moscow's strategic objectives, among them social turmoil in the US and a weakening of the American president's negotiating position. So again, regardless of whether any of this turns out to be true, some of that did come true. The, the US's ability to negotiate or desire to negotiate on any sort of diplomatic work internationally uh, did degrade. Was there social turmoil in the US? Hmm, maybe just a bit. <laughs> along the way, and in pursuit of this, Russia's three spy agencies were ordered to find practical ways to support Trump in a decree appearing to bear Putin's signature. And we even have a photo of the meeting, isn't that nice? <laughs> that said, I don't know, and we're gonna have more details. We don't know about specifically what was done. Even if these orders are true, we don't know what the orders then produced. That said, this seems largely consistent with a lot of the theories about supposed aid between Russia and the Trump campaign, just now apparently with Putin's signature actually on it. Yeah, I mean, you're right, John, it's not gonna matter to a lot of uh, your just average Joes, not Joe Mansions, but your average Joes in the, the country. But you know what, if we learned anything by uh, you know that book, I Alone Can Fix It, there are people in high places that are listening. And not to mention across the globe that are paying attention to this kind of evidence. And there obviously we knew a lot about this kind of stuff already. And Russia and Putin's main goal was to create division in the United States. He did in fact do that. And I'm hoping that with this kind of evidence and documentation to support it, we're gonna be able to prevent that kind of stuff in the future. So it does have some sort of validity. It does have something that you know can help us move forward, at least you know internationally and even within our own government and our own military, recognizing because people that are in the military, they do wanna protect this nation. And they do worry about those kinds of things as we saw that was evident, you know, allegedly in that book. I alone can fix it. So, I, you know, I, I think this is worth it. I'm, I'm glad you're talking about it. The more evidence we throw at it, the people that don't want to believe it, they're not going to believe it. But there are people out there that are interested in finding, you know, cold hard facts. And I think that that's yeah. this is what that is. That's true. And, and there, 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 there are always people who are going to want to actually know what's going on in the world. It's just that there are certain topics that get like yeah. petrified with assumption. And framing and narratives and all that. And it just, it makes me sick to even like to have to talk about those things knowing so many people have been poisoned against right. the truth. And again, we, we don't know for sure that this is authentic. I don't know that we will ever know for sure that this is authentic. It's entirely possible that it is itself some sort of thing that's been leaked intentionally to assist the goals of the Russian government or whatever. I don't know. And I largely don't care. There's a couple <laughs> pieces I think that are interesting. Uh, including when they, they really mocked Donald Trump. So that's fun, so let's turn to that. Uh, in this <laughs> report, which was classified as secret, it says that Trump is the most promising candidate from the Kremlin's point of view, which sort of makes sense. I don't they're not gonna like Hillary Clinton, obviously. Um, but they describe him as an impulsive, mentally unstable and unbalanced individual who suffers from an inferiority complex, which look, that's a couple of things. One, it's funny. Two, it's totally true. I mean, there's yeah. nobody who doesn't, who's 
not already biased to love Donald Trump that doesn't think that's right. true. But that said, like, I do do you feel a little bit bad for Trump? Like, you know, for, for no. whatever reason, whether there's no. behind the scenes stuff or not, he really no, immediately no, that John. Him and, no, but <laughs> hold on, let me make the case. He thinks that Putin and him are buds. And I'm not saying like behind the scenes secret buds like you might see. No, I'm just talking about like they meet up, they have their meetings, and they seem to get along. And that dude is mocking him so much by his back. That's mean. Be nice to your <laughs> bud, man. That's your <laughs> dipl diplomatic bud. I don't know that Donald Trump has any friends, any buds. Yeah, I think he's such an egotistical maniac narcissist that he just thinks everybody loves them. And if they don't, then that's their problem. So mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I could feel bad for somebody mocking somebody from you know behind their back, but I don't immediately know. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's a, one other thing I wanted to briefly mention. It is um, some one of the big headlines that's coming out of this is, wait, did they confirm that they had blackmail material? Wait. Did they confirm that they had the PP tape? The PP so tape. What is leading people to say that? Well, <laughs> there's apparent confirmation that the Kremlin possessed some sort of compromising materials with the documents saying that Trump's earlier quote non official visits to Russian Federation territory. And there are references to certain events that happened in Moscow. There are details in the appendix, but we don't have the appendix. So look, I understand why people might think that that's what it's alluding to, but there's very little information. Like, I, I don't think you can take anything specific out of that. And again, all of that would be assuming that we knew that this is definitely authentic, which we don't and probably never will. So, if you desperately want to believe that this confirms that there's a PP tape, which is not a path I want to go down mentally or emotionally, then yeah. feel free. I, I, to me, it doesn't seem to confirm that. Plus, uh, Trump has done things way more egregious than the PP tape idea. I mean, I wish that was it. That I wish that was the worst thing that he did, but alas, yeah. it is not. I, I don't think it's on the top 200, honestly. Maybe someday we'll make that list. Well, anyway, not, um, not from the perspective of the women involved, but yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's not a bad point. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.